Hey guys, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So what we're doing today is something a little different than what we normally do here on What's the Obsession, which is to talk about true crime and issues of justice, human interaction, behavior, and psychology that are of interest to us. So like all other creators on YouTube, we all do something other than just create for YouTube, right? So some of you know that one of the other things I do is to teach yoga and Pilates. I've been teaching yoga and Pilates for a little over 20 years. I actually started teaching yoga and Pilates in 2002, and it's almost 2023 now. So that makes me feel a little old, but you know, I'm also proud to say that I've been dedicated to this for um, a little over 20 years and taught yoga and Pilates consistently. Um, in fact, I had a yoga studio when I lived in Philadelphia for almost 10 years and really have dedicated to it up until COVID came along and people were coming to live classes. And we do more of a format like this now, and that's okay, right? So something important to understand about yoga is what differentiates yoga from just exercising or calisthenics or physical movements is the idea that in yoga, well, the word yoga itself means to yoke. And the way that we think of it in you know our language in this time is to unite or to bring together, not necessarily to yoke, right? So what we're uniting is the mind, the mental energy of the mind, which is where you're focusing your attention the energy, the physical energy, the energy of the body, moving, observing, how you're feeling, getting the energy flowing within the physical kinesthetic body. And then also the energetic body or the energetic self, which we connect to with breathing. So the word for breath in yoga talk, which is Sanskrit, is prana. And the term for breathing practices is pranayama. The word prana also means vital life energy. So it is understood in the practice of yoga that the breath is like the thread that connects the fibers that weaves the tapestry of who we are. It's an essential connecting characteristic of what's going on in the self, right? <laughs> so first of all, I want you to let you know that when I'm sitting here on the floor, people don't always sit comfortably just on the floor. So I'm sitting on a yoga block right now. So when you elevate your sit bones, those are the bones you're sitting on, right side of the booty, left side of the booty, sit bones, you're sitting on the sit bones, right and left side, right? You're elevating your hips. So your hips are and pelvis are a little bit elevated. So what that does is it gives your hip joins a little more space. If I'm not sitting on the block, my hips sink down to the level of my pelvis. And whether a person has kind of deep or shallow hip sockets is generally speaking an anatomical thing that is with you your whole life more or less, right? Um, Gregory, um, let's see, oh, Green Eyes, my physical therapist and massage therapist on the channel. You guys can tell me if that's accurate or not. Um, for many people, it's more comfortable to sit with the hips slightly elevated above the pelvis so there's more space in the hip joints there. So you might want to make that adjustment. Now, if this ain't working all together, hey, 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 don't quit. <laughs> you can sit up in a chair. It's completely fine to sit in a chair and practice breathing and doing the parts of the stretching and the physical movements you can while seated. There is no right or wrong or goal to attain in yoga. This needs to be understood. Yoga is to, to yoga, to unite you, to unite the energy of the mind, the energy of the body, and the energy that connects us to all of life through breathing, okay? It's all good. Whatever you're doing right now, it's perfect. I promise it is. 
Okay, so let's just start with the breathing. So generally speaking in yoga, um, especially as we get into a little bit of more challenging physical practice, which we're probably not gonna get there today, uh, we breathe in and out through the nose for the most part. So in about equal parts. So let's say breathe in for four, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. Obviously I can't talk and breathe at the same time, so I'm counting for you. Inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, Inhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. So in yoga, often speaking, as you inhale and exhale through the nose, you slightly constrict the muscles, the glottis in the back of the throat. So the inflow and outflow of breath is controlled, but another benefit of this kind of breathing, it's called ujjayi breathing, which literally means victorious breath or strength of breath. It also gives you an audible place, another place inside yourself in this moment for the energy of the mind to rest as you breathe. Because think of all the things our mind energy is asked to do during a day as we take care of our families or our work obligations or just try to get from point A to point B, walking down the street or biking or driving safely. Our energy, I'm sorry, our mental energy is like here, there and everywhere, always directed outside of the cell. So anything we can do to help anchor the energy of the mind so it can be directed inward is beneficial. This is one of the great things about ujjayi breathing. Back to the breath, so you're gonna inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, So keep breathing. So I'm exaggerating the sound of the breath a little bit. So hopefully you can hear. But again, when you're breathing in and out through the nose and you restrict those muscles in the back of the throat, the breath becomes measured and it is also audible like a deep, like an H sound. Or like the sound of waves of the ocean or a breeze or you know many other things that you can think of okay so we are working to have that measured breathing ujjayi breath in and out and in and out so now we're gonna add some movement with the breathing. So when you inhale, reach your arms out and up. When you exhale, lower your right hand to the ground and start to stretch your left arm over. Yeah, I think that's gonna work, right? I think so. I'm trying to mirror you, but with the um, video also, I don't know. So inhale. And exhale. Inhale, come back to center. Reach both arms up. Exhale, left arm down. Right arm reaches over. Take a couple of breaths here. Inhale. Now that's a breath that lengthens. Feel the side of your body elongate. When you exhale, that's a breath that ah, releases and maybe allows you to come a little deeper into the stretch. Inhale, come back to center, reach both arms up. Exhale, bring your palms together through the center line of your body and to the heart. 
So again, linking movement with breathing. Inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, you're going to twist to your right, bringing your right hand to the ground behind you, letting the left arm come across. When you breathe in, sit up nice and tall. The inhale is the part of the breath that creates space. When you exhale, maybe coming a little deeper into the twist. Now a note about spinal twists. First of all, contraindication. If you have herniated discs, take it easy, very easy. Pregnancy, very easy. With pregnancy, pregnancy. Right, so you don't want to do really deep twisting or folding. You always want to think space for baby, right? So don't push it, okay? So now you also want to keep your hips square, facing forward, equal weight between that right and left sit bone, and then your rib cage is essentially turning around the spine rather than leaning forward or back. When you're twisting, you want to think of the crown of the head aligned over the center of the chest lined over the center of the pelvis. So breathe in and exhale. Inhale, come back to center and reach up. Exhale, twisting, taking your left hand to the ground behind you, right arm comes across. Remember, take it easy, don't push it. Hips stay squared forward, equal weight between the right and left sit bone or right and left side of the hips. Deep breath in, sit tall. Deep breath in, maybe twisting a little further, keeping in mind those contraindications I just mentioned. Deep breath in. And exhale. Deep breath in. And exhale. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, bring your hands down through the center line of your body into the heart. Okay, so those are some basic stretching movements, some basic breathing that we can work with as we start to get into a yoga practice, uniting the energy of the mind, the energy of the body, and the energy that connects us to all of life. So let's just do a couple more different kinds of poses here while we're at it. So always continuously breathing. You know I like to talk. I talk a lot. You keep breathing, okay? So deep breath in, deep breath out, always keeping that vital life force flowing through you. Inhale is a breath that nourishes, that energizes. The exhale is a breath that releases toxins, releases stress. It's the, you know, the exhale, right? Okay, so just coming up onto your hands and knees here. So I'm going to turn to face the side just so you can see the alignment of my spine and all of that. Okay, so this is weird because I'm like face um, reverse of what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> so from your hands and knees here, you want to spread your fingers really far apart from one another and press the pads of the knuckles that's the place where your fingers meet your palm into the ground so there's five points there you want to keep your hands like pretty flat on the ground again fingers spread far apart from one another now lift your heels up curling your toes into the ground and if this is enough for you that's okay but if you're ready to come into a deeper stretch you're just going to start to lift your hips up, push into your palms, coming back into what we call downward facing dog. Okay, there we go. So your hands are about shoulder width apart. Yeah. And your feet are about hips width apart. When you look back at your heels beneath your body, you should see that your feet are about parallel to each other and you can keep your knees bent. If your back is like, whoa, Nelly, keep your knees bent. If you know yourself to be flexible or you want a little more of a stretch, you can start to press your heels down towards the ground. 
So just let your head kind of relax. You're gazing back towards your heels. You can bend one knee at a time, pressing the opposite heel towards the ground, just feeling those muscles awaken all the while trying to continue to use that deep and rhythmic ujjayi breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Are you breathing? And exhale. So if at any point you're like, that's just too much for me. You probably found your way down onto your hands and knees. An alternative pose when the class or the practice you're doing asks you to come into down dog is called child's pose. It's a really great, beautiful thing. So <clears throat> now if you have knee issues that prohibit you from being on the knees, there's a lot of modifications we could do here and I'm gonna show you them in another video. So you can just sit your bot back towards the heel. So you're on your knees. Your knees are about shoulder distance apart. And you're just going to bring your forehead down to the ground. Letting your arms outstretch in front of you. So I'm going to come out of the pose. You can stay there if you're able to. So when you are in child's pose, a wonderful thing to do is to think of breathing into the back of your body. So when you inhale, you can feel the, your back expand. You can feel the ribs, the back of your ribs expand. So you're bringing oxygen-rich breath into the muscles, into the tissues in the back of the ribs. One of the literal physical benefits of yoga is to deliver oxygen-rich blood throughout the entire body. As you're moving, as you're paying attention to different parts of your body that you might not normally pay attention to, and you're moving in different ways, you're literally moving muscle fibers and you know all kinds of things within your body that you might not normally move. They become all but <laughs> catatonic. So as you're starting to move these parts of yourself that you don't normally move, as you're breathing deeply and letting your muscles relax as much as you possibly can, you are literally bringing oxygen-rich blood into parts of your body that may not have received fresh oxygen-rich blood in a long time. This is all very health healthy. It goes towards nourishing and nurturing your body but also helping to open up places where you need to release tension and flush out toxins. So if you are still in child's pose, you can just make your way back onto your hands and knees and then into a seated position here. And just let your hands rest on your knees. At the end of the yoga practice, we often will Bring our palms together at the heart. And sometimes the person leading class will say an, a chant or an intention in Sanskrit, Om Namah Shivaya Guru Deva. So bowing your head to the wisdom of your own heart. A traditional ending or salutation for yoga class is to say Namaste. Namaste. And what that essentially means is I am honoring that in you, which is in the same in myself and in all living beings. It's really a beautiful thing. So namaste, my friends. Thank you for spending time here today. Let me know how you liked your yoga breathing and movement essential lesson or class. And if you like it, we'll do more. So everybody, as always, please stay safe. And I hope to see you next time here on the channel or elsewhere.